Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. It's been a really long time since I've done any videos. And um, as you can see, I've moved. You can see this uh, window behind me. It's a very, very different color scheme than where I did uh, those other videos. And um, I've been in this new place about five months, and it works for me on a bunch of different, uh, bunch of different levels, including um, some space in the middle of in the middle of Tucson. Some uh, actual vegetation that's not just uh, cactus and out and uh, you know aloe vera plants or something. Uh, actual trees and uh, offset from the street and quieter, and it's it's better. It's better overall. I have to say though, in the last few months, when I have set, uh, when I have a uh, prepared to do a video there's the noise of barking dogs that just starts and goes on for, for until I call the police and ask them, you know, and file a noise complaint. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. Perhaps to, to put me on an inner, an inner focus for a while, which definitely has been happening. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that today for you. Um, in terms of the topic of the video, which is, I'm going to look at my notes. I forgot the words. I forgot the wording. Yeah, the kind of multi-layered or multi-leveled process of changing something in your life. Um, or healing, or evolving, or raising consciousness. Uh, whatever you're attempting to do to make your life better, um, you're going to encounter multiple layers that you have to look at. In different um, parts of my work, I've looked at this where we talk about um, we might have fears from past lives, we might have um, parts of ourselves from the past, including inner kids, who resist what we're trying to do. Uh, we might have um, other things that are kind of lodged in our physical body, um, maybe old emotions from this life or other lives, that you know don't get covered by those other two categories. And so we have to work on a bunch of different levels to do things. And in my work, consistently, I work with you know really highly evolved, spiritually sophisticated, with it people who have something that resists change. There's some part of themselves that resists the beautiful, inspiring goal that they set out for themselves. So, uh, and I'm, I'm like this too. Of course, I have all these layers as well. And that's um, one of the reasons why I haven't been doing a lot of videos and why um, I did start a podcast a couple of months ago called Conscious Revolution. And I encourage you to check that out. It covers uh, some of the things that I've covered in this video series, but it touches on all aspects of my work. Um, mediumship channeling, astrology, past lives, energy work, chakras, um, you know, how to, how to understand these different parts of ourselves. So it covers the whole gamut. So I encourage you to check that out through my site, uh, tdjacobs.com, called Conscious Revolution. There's a link from the homepage to, su to subscribe to it. And um, so I've done that. Um, I did release the Lilith book, Lilith Healing the Wild, on May 25th, or May 24th of this year. So that's exciting. Check that out if you haven't already. Um, it tells the complete story of how I work with this archetype uh, that's misunderstood and maligned, frankly, but is our connection to our bodies, our ability to connect to the earth and to identify as extensions of nature itself and to hear the wisdom of the natural world in our bodies. So I've been busy, but less so, less so than the previous couple of years. One of the reasons is, um, you know, I channel all this, I channel all this stuff, uh, I channel this ascended, this stuff. I channel the ascended Master Jehudi, also known as Thoth and Saint Germain and Merlin, and uh, I have access to all these amazing teachings. And I've published four channel books and one book that combines all four books. And uh, you know, I've real and, and the whole Chiron teaching is based in channeling from from that being as well, and the importance of compassion and living a heart centered life and changing our lives for the better. All this stuff. But I still have had certain resistance uh, because I haven't understood how to deal with certain emotions that I have. So, for me, I've been doing this work for eight years professionally. People from all over the world call me to help them release past life stuff, to understand you know, the purpose of their family relationships, all the astrology stuff, all of that. And yet I still have been working on certain uh, blocks to dealing with food and emotions. That's been my big thing or emotions and how that leads to certain behaviors with food. And I know a lot of people have that issue as well, and I actually help people with that issue, you know, but then I have not understood anger, which is the trigger for me, or has been the trigger for me for, for eating emotionally. Basically, I'm filled with energy that I don't know what to do with. And as I mentioned um, briefly in uh, uh, episode five of Conscious Revolution, um, nothing seems to work except eating a food that lowers my vibration. So about two and a half months ago I set out, I just said, this year, the next calendar year, 
I'm going to figure out what is the deal with this anger crap. <laughs> what, what, what is going on here? Because I'm consciously aware for years that of what the trigger is, but I haven't, I mean, everything that I've tried to do, and I'm pretty resourceful <laughs> as far as trying to figure out ways to work around things and work through things in creative ways. Um, if you've worked with me, you know, you know that, and I, everything that I do with my clients, I've done on myself 20 times. Uh, so, uh, I got to the point where um, I fasted every day, every Monday for five weeks, and it was going to be a year worth of Mondays, and then I realized that a juice fast that I've been thinking about for upwards of a year, a juice cleanse, say it that way, because I'm not really fasting, but a juice cleanse, where I'm consuming only vegetable juices, fruit juices, and water, uh, was really important, but a long-term one. And I've done a couple of these up to 10 days before and other ones of a shorter duration in, the, in previous years. Uh, but I couldn't do it until I was able to deal with the emotional thing better. So what I want to tell you, I mean, I don't want to just give you my story only, but what I want to tell you is um, give you an, uh, use the story to illustrate different aspects of how I've, I've done this. So my mind, <laughs> my conscious awareness knew I needed to do a juice fast. My conscious mind was aware that my body was unhappy. My, you know, my intellect was aware, you know, the, the thing that I think is me, my brain, was completely in touch with the truth that my body wasn't happy with how I was eating. So, um, I, sometimes I'll do a thing where I will talk about something in my head and see if it sticks, like throwing pasta on the wall and seeing if it sticks. And doing the juice fast, it sounded like I needed to do it but I didn't feel empowered to do it. And it was because this part of me that, that doesn't yet know how to, or hadn't yet figured out how to deal with the anger, was feeling handicapped. Because if that happens, then I might explode. Being filled with energy, I do have Mars and Uranus in the first house, and that can be sudden, you know, volcanoes of, of different kinds of, of energy, of Mars. Um, and so when I uh, pick up on energies in my environment I'm unhappy with, and when I eat things that stress me out, and when I listen to somebody on the phone, like personally, not in clients, because I seem to have better boundaries with clients than I do with my mother, for example, but like if she's in a complaining mood or something, or if my girlfriend is having a really hard time, I don't want to shield myself against them. I don't want to, you know, push them out. But sometimes I may take on a little bit of the, of the flavor of what they're experiencing, and that will, I, I don't want to experience it. It's uncomfortable for me. Fear resentment, anger, hatred, uh, depression, um, resentment, um, you know, judging the self, that's a huge one that I pick up on people all the time, um, that I don't want to be around. So when I, my body responds by you know, just being like trying to burn it off or purge it out or push it out or something, and I feel full of energy trying to push the, the junky energy out. And as I said, the only thing that's worked so far is eating something that lowers my vibration, so I'm not as aware of what my, my body is experiencing. Well, that is done. That's out. We're done. <laughs> Just, I can't ex emphasize to you enough how that's done. Uh, how complete I am with that process. So, my brain knew all these things. I'm listening to my body. And yet, I became aware of that trigger several years ago uh, by observing, which is what I suggest everyone uh, do, is uh, observe, well, what is happening in that behavior pattern? Stop judging it um, and observe what's happening. So as I did that, I seemed to know everything about it except what to do instead. So um, as I mentioned also, I think in episode four of Conscious Revolution, I started taking, because uh, that, that episode is about... Uh, affirmations, but also sometimes when you have to do other things to add to affirmations. Um, dealing with past life parts, dealing with inner kids, you know, dealing with the, the part of you that doesn't buy the affirmation. And also I talk about supplements, uh, two that I recently have been taking um, before the cleanse, uh, CalMag and Calcium Magnesium, because that calms you down. Most people don't get enough magnesium unless you're doing something like eating a ton of greens or juicing like I am. Uh, and then also 5-HTP, which is the, the metabolic precursor for serotonin, so it's the happy juice. It's right, your body takes in the 5-HTP and it says, oh, now I'm free to make happy juice. So the, these helped me calm down, start to sleep a little better, because I was really stressed out from just all this energy and not sleeping well. Uh, so so that, that helped me, and when I was on that for a few weeks and doing that, I started to see clearly more about what's actually happening. And for me in the anger thing, and I talk about this in the podcast episode, but I'm going to repeat it here uh, because it's an integral part of the story, is that I became aware of, I mean, 
Jehudi had told me this. <laughs> and I'm uh, sure I had typed it. He had typed it through me, and it's in one of these books. Uh, it's in some of these cha these channelings that I brought through. But the, the human is an, an energetic being. And what that one of the things that means is that when you sense energy, you respond energetically. But we experience energy emotionally. So I ex let's say that somebody is generating fear. I might I might pick up on the emotion if my heart is fully open, but if it's not fully open, I might just pick up on the energy of that fear, and then I respond with fear, right? I respond with something that matches it. So, uh, and the answer, by the way, just to make a kind of cut out a, a couple diversions, long story part, the answer isn't to cut off from other people. The answer is to be extremely aware of what you're ex what you're experiencing, what's around you and to make clear, firm, grounded decisions about what you're available to experience. That's the answer. So then when you're dealing with somebody who brings up resentment, fear, depression, whatever, uh, some energy you can't deal with or you don't want to have to deal with, right, that's unhealthy to deal with, um, you can uh, establish some boundaries in that moment, not in shutting them out, but in saying to that person, I can't really be around you right now. So if you're in a relationship, that needs to happen. It sometimes... I've talked about this quite a bit in different contexts uh, with, with people, and maybe on videos, but, but saying, I love you and I can't do that for you. And also, each person in a relationship, when one person decides to do this, each person needs to get clear about what he or she is expecting of the other person. Wanting, needing, expecting. So, um, basically, if my girlfriend has a bad day and she feels down about herself, and I had the best day ever, and she comes home, I'll interact with her and I'll talk with her, I'll give her a hug, I'll give her a kiss, but then if she's kind of, you know, maybe prone to wallow in something or kind of be stuck in some, some energy I can't deal with, I'll say, I can't really be around you right now. And she does the same thing. So that seems to me a great um, way to deal with each person moving, uh, perhaps in the same direction, but perhaps at different speeds and dealing with these things ourselves. Sometimes when we feel miserable and when other people feel miserable, we want to share it with others, but don't. Just <laughs> cut that crap out. Uh, so back to the story. Then I finally saw, after taking this, the CalMag and the 5-HTP for a while, I was able, because I felt calm, I was able to have clarity about this trigger and really see the process, because it, it still happened. I still had this kind of bubbling up of this energy that turned into anger, but it would last for three minutes at a time or 20 minutes at a time instead of rise up and then be with me until I ate something that lowered my vibration. Um, so... So I want to give you this. I want to give you this model too of um, uh, gaining awareness of what you're experiencing, gaining awareness of what's actually happening while refraining from judging it. it doesn't matter what the behavior or the reaction or the emotion. It doesn't matter what it is in your life that you want to shift and change. You cannot do it if you're judging yourself, if you're hating yourself for any reason, and you cannot do it if you don't understand what's happening. So there was uh, a period of maybe a year and a half or two, maybe two-ish years where I knew all these things, but I didn't understand yet, and I still allowed myself, without judgment, without criticism, to eat in those ways. But because I was aware of it, it happened less often, because I wasn't hating myself, so part of me wasn't feeling destructive uh, in the same way. But also, um, I wasn't keeping it out of consciousness, and I was watching it. And so there are certain parts of us that simply need attention too, and they need to be heard. And so it can be useful if, if you have a if you have a habit or behavior that you judge a lot, stop judging it and see what happens. You'll start to make friends with a part of you that's carrying that that emotion and that energy. So becoming absolutely aware of it. Um, I make notes in my head, but I sometimes I suggest to clients to keep you in a journal about the emotions surrounding these triggers and what these triggers are, and kind of putting two and two together. And uh, I also suggest, and I did this uh, quite a bit, um, the trigger happens, the emotion happens, and the part of you is habituated to respond, so don't. Just perhaps insert 15 minutes before you respond. I worked uh, with a client a few months ago who was having that with cigarettes, and she, she didn't really understand why she smoked and she didn't want to do it, but it was a part of her that was trying to fill up with smoke so she wouldn't have to breathe in what was going on around her. It was a holdover from, from uh, you know, childhood, but, but still that behavior persisted. So I suggested that she just wait 
before she do it, if she is going to do it, but without judgment. And that helps us get to know these parts of ourselves. When you have that awareness and you have an, a, basically a, 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 you know, a relationship that's becoming more kind with the part of you that is carrying this pain and difficult emotion and or anger, anger and resentment, by the way, cover over pain, this is the general human rule. Um, when you have that, that more developed relationship, the urgency starts to, to, to ebb off, starts to, to kind of go away a little bit. And uh, so approximately a week before I started this juice cleanse, uh, which is like the last week in July is when this uh, thought occurred, I, I suddenly knew, I mean it was sudden, it was going to start the day after um, the last call with Jehudi, which was August 1st. So August 2nd would be the first day. Uh, my body was ready, but I had that commitment to uh, channel for the full moon call, and I didn't know in the first week if I would feel good or have the energy to really, um, you know, hold space for 15 or 20 or 25 people to do energy work, for, to, to have Jehudi do energy work uh, through me, and to channel for them for, for an hour. Kind of an intense experience um, on my end, as well as the, the, uh, the participants. So, basically, I had mentally prepared myself for a very long time, knowing that when the time was right, I would shift it, and then I put attention on all the little steps in the process uh, that needed to be dealt with. Basically, getting to the bottom of uh, you know, uh, the emotional issue, awareness of the emotional issue, led me to be able to do the thing my body had for upwards of a year, said, please do this. So... Again, don't judge yourself. I mean, that's going to transform your life if you choose to accept yourself exactly where you are, no matter what you're doing or what's going on. That's <laughs> it's going to rocket you into the future. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but also maintain conscious, constant awareness of what's happening. Um, one of the best ways I found to do this is to do meditation. Um, the particular meditation that I teach people, uh, one of them, the primary one, uh, is available on my site for it's a 13 minute mp3 it's a free download um, and tdjacobs.com on the right hand side of the page you can download it for free and um, it helps you ground to the earth and, and then open your crown uh, to the cosmos and then open your heart and clear out energies that don't belong to you and feed your own self by generating love which is something that most people uh, aren't quite uh, Nobody's been, most people haven't been taught to do that. We generate love in response to something. Uh, here's a cute puppy, here's my sister, here's my loved one, something like this. Uh, and then our hearts open. And we have to, in order to evolve as humans, we have to uh, learn how to uh, open our hearts because we choose to do it. I think that's it for today. I feel really inspired to do videos, but I think... Uh, I think this rambling, I think I'm rambling today, but it's okay. It's been a long time since I've done any videos. I'll tell you about some upcoming events. Um, there are two spots still open in September's Energy is Money is Energy course, which is about transforming debt and opening to receive. Uh, looking at the link between energy, money, and love, and how you can solve any money issues by addressing issues about love and receiving and care and kindness and compassion and nurturing in your own inner space incredibly powerful. The August one filled up within a week to ten days, uh, eight people to do that, and then uh, there are two spots left in September's. Um, go to my site, TD Jacobs, to find out more about that. Um, oh, it starts uh, September 11th, but there are two phone calls on the 18th and 25th. Those are the dates to... No, that's wrong. That was August 8th. Uh, September 8th is when you start your journal homework uh, that I assigned, and then uh, September 15th and 22nd are the two phone calls. Um, and the other event to come up is uh, August 30th is the next full moon grounding and release call. That's something that I've started since uh, you guys heard of, saw a video from me, saw a new one. Um, we've done four thus far. I'm channeling, as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, I'm channeling a Send a Master Jehudi for these full moon calls uh, right around the full moon or the day before. Uh, every month so far. We'll do it, we'll do it until, uh, until the time is right to stop doing it. But... Um, a, a grounding meditation and then releasing affirmations while Jehudi and I do energy work on every caller. And it's offered on a donation basis, 10 to 25 bucks. This is an incredible opportunity uh, to get energy work from an Ascended Master, and it's a consciousness tune-up. That's the opportunity. So uh, that's, uh, that happens every month, and I'm really happy to facilitate those. Um, 
And you can find out more about that through my calendar as well, tdjacobs.com forward slash time. So read more at tdjacobs.com. Uh, check out the Lilith book, check out the Energy is Money is Energy course, and um, make the decision to care for yourself better and to do, and to do something nice for yourself. Um, oh, final note. Uh, today is day 15 of this juice cleanse. I may go up to 60, I may not. I'm listening to my body. My body right now is saying, the colon cleansing you're doing is superb, please continue. And it's also saying, please uh, cultivate this state of emptiness because it helps you out emotionally. And my body is also saying, um, that broccoli you're about to juice, it would taste wonderful, <laughs> it would taste wonderfully, but let your body rest. I mean, every time I cut up an apple, I, you know, I do want to eat it. Not like a craving, because I just want to, ex it's that I want to experience that. So the resetting of, uh, you know, my body's uh, and taste buds to want healthy foods has already occurred. I don't think it takes 15 days to do that, not even close. Um, but yeah, day 15, so um, I, feel, I feel proud of myself uh, for doing this uh, because it's an investment in you know, me getting done on this planet what's uh, important for me to do. I can't do it if I'm carrying vibrations from past eating patterns that don't work for me. So uh, you can follow my blog, actually. I'll probably be doing more regular updates in my blog at tdjacobs.com forward slash blog. And uh, thanks for your time and attention, and take care. Bye-bye.